Come on up here. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. Many of you might know this guy as the general. He is 16 weeks old today. He's a Belgian Malinois. He's our second. We had one for 13 years and he passed away last August. One of the things that I'm gonna be doing with him today, if I could get him to stay on this table long enough for this intro, is get him acclimated to some gunshots. It's a really hot day today. It's gonna to be probably over 110 degrees on the sandy ranges where I do all my loud stuff. So I think it's best for he and I to stay in the shade in my backyard where I can shoot 22 suppressed subsonic and 300 blackout suppressed subsonic. Oh, you got a jackpot there. I am gonna get him down on the ground for this. I tried doing some stuff on the table for him, but he's just too big and too jumpy. He wants to, to uh, get off this table to see what's going on. So I'm going to be paying him with food to keep him interested in something other than the, the gunshots. There are a couple of different reactions that we might get from him. We might get fear. I don't think so. I've done a little bit of shooting my 1022 suppressed around him. It doesn't bother him. He, he'll look and see what's going on, but that's it. Uh, we might see him run around because he gets a little bit excited about what's going on. He might bark. He might even growl. Those are reactions that I'm not going to be worried about because eventually he can learn that there's nothing to get excited about just by seeing that I'm not doing anything about it. And uh, then that's just how you get them accustomed to it. There's some dogs that are just naturals, but I think it's pretty rare that you're going to get a Malinois when you, and you're going to do something really loud and, and different for them and you're not going to get some kind of reaction from them. Um, <laughs> though he does have a really high food drive as you can see. So it's just a matter of doing things, gently easing him into gunshots so that when he's older and I get hearing protection that actually works for him, then uh, we will be able to take him to the actual gun range. I have doggles, but he really doesn't like them. Uh, they're, they're eye protection for dogs. And uh, the problem with them is I could get him to wear them, but as soon as he really wants to see what's going on, he tries to get them off and I don't blame him because the frame itself is so high profile, he can only see straight out. He can't, and he sit on a dog's face a little bit like that, almost pointing up. So his natural line of sight is obscured by the bottom frame. I've got some eye protection called Rex Specs, which are more like, which are goggles, like, like, a, like ski goggles and they only come in adult size, so he's gotta grow into them, but they're gonna be a whole lot better because they're a lot lower profile and uh, they've got a spherical lens. It's, it's a whole much better system. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a plywood barrier that I use for uh, blocking arrows and stuff like that. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be able to stop anything that doggles will be able to stop that come back at us. And he's gonna be behind the barrier and I'm gonna shoot around the side of it He's gonna be on the ground and, and that way he can run around and we don't have to worry about him deciding he wants to jump off of this and basically get out of the view of the camera. So that's what we're gonna do next on Twang and Bang. Mwah. All right, down you go, good boy. Rufus, Rufus. Come here. Okay, first up is the 1022. <laughs> that didn't bother him at all. I'm gonna do a few. I don't have a whole lot in this mag. Oh, I just dumped it all <laughs> on my back leg. Well, you're a good boy. You deserve it anyway. You can stay back there. Good boy. So that went really well. So he was more interested in the food than really what was going on with the noise. But as I said, this isn't really new for him. He's, he's heard this before. I got to load up with some more kibble and then we're going to do the 300 blackout. So this is 220 grain Remington 300 blackout. I'm shooting my AAC handy rifle 
And this is my Liberty Infinity suppressor. It's a nine millimeter suppressor, it's titanium. It actually is still my quietest suppressor when used with 300 blackout subsonic. So that's what I'm gonna use. There's not gonna be any action noise associated with it. And uh, though it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite a, a sound. And this might get more of a reaction to them. I'm gonna shoot them one at a time, so it's gonna give more time in between each. Let's see how this goes. Come here, pup. That's fine. So he showed a little bit of a reaction. It wasn't fear. I mean, if you all of a sudden had something really loud go off next to you, you'd want to look at it too. And uh, he's eating all the kibble, or at least the stuff that he could find. Come here, pup. There's stuff right here. There you go. Okay. So, uh, now that some of the kibble's gone, he's got a little bit more of like, hey, what's going on? I think this is something I should check out kind of reaction. Where is she? Here you go. You missed this. But it's not aggression. That is more of his, uh, I'm a dog. I'm here to check things out bark. Uh, so, I'm gonna shoot a few more since I have more kibble. We'll probably get a little bit more of that reaction, but I'm just gonna do three more shots and whatever we get, as long as we end on a high note, we're gonna be done for the day because we don't, we don't need to push it. There's no reason to. There you go, pup. Good boy. Good boy. I do want you behind the barrier for this. Come here, pup. There you go. Just gonna do one more. Perfect. Yay. Good boy. Woo, sweat is dripping off of me. It is a hot, humid day here in North Carolina. So there you go. That's it. That's, that's what getting accustomed to gunshots is going to look for this guy. Next time I'm out here, I might do exactly the same thing. And over time, I'll bring out a semi-auto 300 blackout so I get a little more action noise and uh, then from there it'll be moving on to a range where he's far enough away that when I shoot suppressed supersonic ammunition through this or through 556 five, it's not going to be harmful to his hearing but he's going to be wondering what's going on and for that it'll be good to have a family member with me somebody that he trusts that'll be paying him while he's doing that but this is a great start for this guy. I don't see anything about his mannerisms that give me any concern whatsoever. It's just going to be getting better from here. Okay. Come on up, pup. There you go. Good boy. That was something else, huh? <laughs> so I realize not everybody has access to silencers, but if you're a shooter and you don't have a silencer yet, what are you waiting for? They're legal for individual ownership in 41 states. And though, yes, you have to pay $200 of the federal government and go through a background check with the ATF. I, I wish it wasn't that way. Believe me, a bunch of us are working to try and, and change that. But the fact is, the more of us that own NFA items, National Firearms Act items like uh, suppressor, the easier it's going to be for us to make changes about the laws that regulate them. 
But the main thing is, anytime you're training your dog, doesn't matter what it's for, you want to keep it short, you want to keep your ego out of it. The worst thing that I've seen with training guns for dogs has been some of my friends who got, who got uh, bird dogs. And they think, oh, well, this is a bird dog. They are bred to be able to handle gunshots, and they just go right out and hunt over the dog. And you can take a good dog and turn them into a gunshot dog by doing that. You should ease a dog into it. If you don't have a silencer, don't be shooting right next to your dog to try to get them started. You don't need to start them when they're seven weeks old. Wait until they show confidence with the different noises and things that go on in, in your house, out and about, uh, in strange environments, those kinds of things. And that's why I've been waiting until he's 16 weeks old like this to do that. <laughs> He is an Advitisha Malinois. Ivan Balabanov bred him. I'm a big fan of his and his training methods. If you want to learn more about his Malinois, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you want to keep up to date with this guy, be sure to follow me on Facebook. I'm putting stuff up there every couple of days. Facebook.com forward slash twangandbang.net spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T. -E be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns and other cool stuff including puppy videos <laughs> i really appreciate you watching twang and bang and we both hope to see you next time good boy good boy calm down <laughs>